And guys, in this next news story, four men have been jailed for the killing in cold blood of a Nottingham dad on a busy street. Ricardo Cottrell is 33, died on the pavements in Broad Street after being stabbed 14 times in front of horrified revellers. Two knives were used in the attack and Mr Cottrell, who's a father of two, succumbed to his injuries despite the efforts of emergency workers to save him. Four defendants were found guilty of murder back in July following a trial at Nottingham Crown Court and they included Malcolm Francis, who's 30, Daniel Francis, who's 27, Richard Anderson, who's 25, and Ija Moore, who's 31. The four killers were back in court today for sentencing and they all received life sentences and each told how the minimum length of time they will serve behind bars before they can apply for parole. Malcolm Francis will serve a minimum of 30 years. Daniel Francis will serve a minimum of 27 years. Anderson will serve a minimum of 27 years. Moore will serve a minimum of 25 years. There was a fifth defendant who was found not guilty of murder and not guilty of an alternative charge of manslaughter. The jury heard that Mr Cottrell was on weekend release from prison when he was ambushed and murdered outside Wax Bar shortly before 2 o'clock in the morning on the 24th of April 2022. Footage shown to the jury captured three of the defendants, Malcolm Francis, Daniel Francis and Richard Anderson, leaving the bar and heading towards Mr Cottrell before attacking him. The court heard Mr Cottrell ran down the streets after being stabbed but was chased and attacked again by the trio and that it was Malcolm Francis who dealt the fatal blow. Whilst Moore was not involved in the physical attack, he played an important supporting role by acting as a lookout and getaway driver, enabling the Francis brothers and Anderson to carry out the murder. In the sentencing hearing today, the prosecutor John Lloyd Jones KC said Mr Cottrell was stabbed, chased and attacked again in a planned and premeditated attack that only stopped when one of the attackers was heard saying, he's dead, he's dead, let's go. He added there was evidence to suggest the murder had been an act of revenge following a previous violent incident that caused hostility and ill feeling between Mr Cottrell and his killers. Following the murder, Mr Lloyd Jones KC said the defendants did everything they could to evade capture, including fleeing Nottinghamshire, discarding knives and disposing of clothing worn on the knives and mobile phones. He said, but robust work by detectives led to the arrest of the defendants and within a few weeks of the attack, with a combination of CCTV, forensic analysis and mobile phone evidence, helped secure the murder convictions. In sentencing the defendants, the judge, Stuart Rafferty KC, said Mr Cottrell had been unarmed and defenceless and that his murder was a tragedy. He said, whatever Mr Cottrell had done in the past, he did not deserve to die. The way in which he met his death was appalling from any number of perspectives. Each of you knew perfectly well what was going to happen that night. This was a careful killing in cold blood. Following the verdicts, Mr Cottrell's family said in a joint statement, Ricardo was a one in a million and an inspiration to all who knew him. He was a family man. He loved his family and would do anything for them. He was the heart and glue to our family. We are grateful and blessed to have shared this experience of loving life with Ricardo and being loved by him. But his legacy will live on through his two beautiful daughters who are left behind without a father. We are happy to know those responsible for Ricardo's death will not be in a position to pose a risk to the public for some considerable time. I would like to thank everyone have supported us in this difficult time. He said we would also like to extend our heartfelt thanks to the major crime units of Nottinghamshire Police and the Crown Prosecution Service. They said our lives will never be the same again. They said since we lost Ricardo we've all come to realise you don't just lose someone you love once, you lose them over and over. Detective Chief Inspector Claire Dean who oversaw the investigation welcomed the sentencing as she said this was an appalling act of premeditated violence in a busy public place and our thoughts remain with Mr Cottrell's family as they attempt to come to terms with their devastating loss. Said Ricardo Cottrell was unarmed on the night he was murdered in what can only be described as a cowardly planned and targeted knife attack. After carrying out their unprovoked and calculated plan, the group fled the scene, leaving Mr Cottrell for dead on the pavement. Said while the sentencing will not alleviate the pain and suffering of Ricardo's family, it does mean that dangerous individuals have been rightly taken off our streets for a significant amount of time. He said, I would like to pay tribute to all the officers and staff who are putting so many hours into investigating this case and bringing these men to justice. So guys, in this next news story, a drugs gang that supplied cocaine across Portsmouth and laundered millions of pounds in cash has been jailed. The gang leader, 
Louis Edwards, who's 44 off Waterlooville, was jailed for 18 years and five months at Winchester Crown Court following a five-year police investigation during which he was extradited back to the UK from Spain. Appearing at the same court previously, Edwards admitted conspiracy to supplying cocaine in ports within the surrounding areas and conspiracy to transfer criminal property relating to approximately £3.5 million in cash that he moved. All of these offences took place between March 2018 and May 2020. There were several other people who were involved in convicted for offences in June 2022 and sentenced, and they were Mahmoud Lebebeb, who was 34, from Middlesex, he was jailed for five years and six months following his convictions for conspiracy to transfer criminal property relating to moving more than £10 million in cash around the UK. Gary Lay, who was 49 of Portsmouth, was jailed for four years and ten months for being concerned in the supply of cocaine. Paul Louis Peter Revel, who was 43, was jailed for 27 months for being concerned in the supply of cannabis. There was Kevin McCall, who was 39, from South Sea. He was jailed for three years for possession of cocaine with intent to supply. At Alfred Schwartzman, who's 32 of Portsmouth, was jailed for two years and six months for possession of cocaine with intent to supply. There was a Perry Blackford, who's 34. He was jailed for two years and three months for conspiracy to transfer criminal property. And then there was a Daniel Saunders, who was under a three-month sentence suspended for 12 months. Edwards was the head of the organised crime group with the other defendants playing key roles in moving cash and drugs for him. In total, it's estimated that Edwards' operation sold 60 kilos of cocaine in Portsmouth. Lay, McCall and Blackford assisted with the movements of cash and drugs with couriers with professionally built hidden compartments inside vehicles used in transportation while Shortman was a customer who bought large quantities of cocaine from Edwards for onward sale. The Bebeb, however, worked with other organised crime groups but laundered large quantities of cash for members of Edwards' gang. The defendants used encrypted mobile phones and Edwards was found to have ordered multiple kilos of cocaine in April and May 2020 via EncroChat, which as we know was an encrypted messaging platform which was infiltrated by law enforcement agencies in 2020. In a bid to evade justice, Edwards fled to Spain in October that year but was located hiding out in Benidorm in June 2022 before being extradited to the UK. Prior to leaving the UK, however, he enjoyed his ill-gotten gains by buying himself a new car, a four-bedroom house and a holiday to Dubai. He also splashed the cash on thousands of pounds of designer goods from Harrods in London. So these recent convictions and sentence were part of an investigation for drug supply after police raided a lockup in Clamp Farm in Newtown back in 2019, which was linked to Edwards and there were a number of other individuals that had previously been jailed. You had Lee Matthews, Jason Stanley, Robert Hay, David Mulvoy, Kevin Franks. They all got sentences either from suspended up to 15 years. And in total, over the course of the investigation conducted by the CS and Organised Crime Unit, police seized around £300,000 in cash and more than 70 kilos of cocaine, with an estimated street value exceeding £7 million and more than 20 kilos of amphetamine. Upon sentencing Edwards this week, her honour, Judge Angela Morris commented, There is no dispute that you are the person at the head of this organised crime group and in charge of recruitment, training and direction of operatives. This was a highly sophisticated operation involving the wholesale acquisition of importation-grade cocaine, which was then distributed to others. She said, I'm satisfied that you were involved in the sale of more than 60 kilos of cocaine and at a rate of more than one kilo of cocaine per week. As the leader of this organised crime group, you were sourcing import-grade cocaine from a major national supplier and given the quantities and purities of the drug, this had to be either the importer of it or someone very close to the importer with whom you were dealing. So I've considered your involvement by reference to a number of different factors which include the surveillance evidence, the telephone evidence, the dates when the drugs were seized from operatives and other premises and the actions of you and others involved in your organised crime group which includes the Clamp Farm search and seizure in 2019 where police found 64 kilos of imported grade cocaine in one search. She said the truth is that your motivation was purely financial and you enjoyed the fruits of that operation for a lengthy period of time without any regard for the consequences to others. So guys, here's a couple of stories coming out from the streets of the UK. It's your boy GT. Keep it locked, keep it real.